Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Shaping Your Destiny with Charismatic Impact for Christ Ministry. My name is Reverend Eric McWilliams, and I'm here today to be a blessing to someone that has got an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his church. I want you to prepare yourself, call somebody, tell someone that something awesome is about to take place in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We are interested in being uh, bringing impact into your life. We were interested in seeing your life move from one place to the other, from one direction into the next direction, from one place of not seeing any results and moving to the next place where you will gain results and see what God will do in your life. God is not dead. He's well and alive. He is alive and is kicking and he will do something awesome in your life this evening in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Well, I hope you're having a great time. I want to salute everyone that's watching me right now from the London studio from all the world. We bring you greetings in the name of Jesus. I want you to make sure that connect with me by faith and let's see what God will do because by the, the act of your faith, in other words, for you to believe in the word of God, God will release power through the belief action that you take in his word. And so I know something awesome will happen for you in the name of Jesus. I thank God for those of you who called us concerning last week's message and you were so blessed and touched by misdirection, strange relationships. I'm going to try and continue today in that same path of misdirection in strange relationships and we're going to trust God that he will bless your life and release you from all kinds of strange and evil relationships that the enemy has set in order to make sure that your life or the things that God wants to cause to occur in your life to not for you to miss them and so get ready tell someone about them if, if you know anybody that is struggling to uh, find feet struggling to make sure things will happen and they're trying to make things happen but it's not happening maybe it's a relationship they've gotten into and it has been an hindrance to them well Let's close our eyes and let's move straight into the Word of God because there's much to cover. I've got 30 minutes or so and uh, it, does, it goes very fast when the Word of God starts flowing. So get yourself ready and then take out details, the telephone numbers and everything. Call us. My assistants are waiting and they will help you with whatever need. Um, if you want us to pray with you, stand in prayer. That's what we will do. I usually don't take any calls during the live broadcast, I reserve that so that we can uh, effectively talk with you and minister with you after the broadcast. So just call me after or leave your name so that right after the broadcast we can get in contact with you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to enter into the house of your people via media that they will hear that which you have to say to them, Spirit of God, I know that your people have gathered in front of their TV sets, on, in front of their uh, tablets, in front of their phones to watch this broadcast, live broadcast. I pray, my God, that those that you want to speak to connect your word into their life and release the bondages of the enemy from their lives and to cause them to move forward, that they are positioned right now watching me. So I pray, my God, the releasing of your power into their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Break and destroy that which the enemy is doing in their lives in Jesus. Jesus name amen if you got your Bibles with you I want you to look with me at Judges chapter number 16 Judges chapter number 16 we're going to be reading from verse 4 coming down Judges chapter number 15 uh, 16 from verse 4 coming down and that's what we're going to center our message on we're dealing with strange relationships in misdirection Last week we did the same thing, dealing with misdirection, and we looked at the lives of um, Ahab and how Ahab 
was a great king, but the Bible says that he did more evil and there was no one like him. And the reason why he did more evil against the, the, the God and against the, uh, his principles, against the people of God, is because he was incited to do so. And so it became a snare against him. He was a mighty man, but his relationship caused him not to be as mighty and come into his full post potential. Well, let's see what's happening here. We're in Judges chapter number 16, and we're going to be looking at the life of Samson and look at something that he was going on in his life. Verse number four. After this, it came about that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him and see where his great strength lies, and how we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. Then we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength is and how you may be bound to afflict you. Amen. Strange relationships, as I said from last week, is that in this life or in, the, in life, we move with relationship. Life is designed that you and I operate through relationships and we get to destinies or destinations through the links of relationships. In other words, it, you cannot do it by yourself. You need the help of somebody. It is in relationships. You know, uh, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they're in an agreement? The Bible says, woe to you if you're all by yourself because if you fall in a pit, how will you be able to have someone that will be able to lift you up if you are all by yourself. If you're all by yourself, how would you ever find the encouragement and, and the, the, how will you ever get the support you need if you're all by yourself? So because of that, the Bible says that when God saw that Adam was all alone or one, then he says, I must make him a helpmate. You know, so it was not good that Adam was all one or all alone. He made him a helpmate so the two can agree together. The Bible says one shall chase a thousand and two shall put to flight ten thousand. So it is, we can do more when we link up in relationship than we are able to do by ourselves. But the problem is that because we are mighty through relationships, it is an avenue where the enemy seeks to make sure that great people, people of destiny, listen to me, child of God, I'm talking about people of destiny. I don't know how you see yourself and how you see your life and whether you notice that there's something peculiar about you. I want, I want you to notice there is something amazing about you. There's a reason why God has you and God called you and God uh, out of your whole family. You were the first one that God called out of the family. He could, he could have called your brother, he could have called your sister, but it was you he called out first. Your, your parents are not saved, but he called you out first. Your brother is not saved, but he called you out first. Your sister is not saved, but he called you out first. There were many siblings, but he called you out. Why? There was a particular reason. There is some reason why you went through all the things you went through, but you were preserved and you did not die. You went through through an accident, but you were preserved. You went through mistreatment, but you were preserved. There is a reason why you have been preserved through everything that you go through in this life. You know the enemy tried to kill you. You know you were so you are not supposed to be alive. Through the sickness, you know, everybody thought this sickness would be the end of you. You were supposed to die. But somehow, some way, you came out and you, were, you did not die. You disappointed the expectations of those who had it towards you. And now you are alive. But you are not alive just to go through life like this. There is something unique. There is something awesome that God has for you. And for that reason, God has something 
thing that he's going to do with you. For that reason, he is doing all those things he's doing with your life. And so for people who are people of destiny, people who have visions, people who have dreams, dreams that is bigger than life, dreams that you alone could not do except God do it. I'm not talking about the dream that only you can fulfill. If it's a dream that only you can fulfill, God bless you for that kind of dream. Do it so and fulfill it and God will bless you. But there are some people that have dreams that they cannot fulfill it by themselves. It's only, it's going to take God and it's going to take God connecting relationships together to in order to bring about the fulfillment of the dream. Hallelujah. The Bible says that even with Jesus, that Jesus had to gather himself 12 disciples, even though one of them was a satanic agent, but still Jesus had to get himself 12 disciples. And then when his assignment was done and he left, the, the weight or the, the mantle rested upon the, the 11 that were left. And the 11 became the shakers of cities. Are you listening to me, someone? It is out of the relationship. It, he did not do it by himself, but in his earthly life, he was linked and God brought together relationship with him and that made him successful. The Bible says that Mary and Martha loved Jesus so much and Jesus will oftentimes go and visit them. That is a relationship that God connected him into. So in your life, God will connect you into great relationships that will propel you to where you are going in destiny. But in the same way, the enemy will also try and locate in your life relationships that will take you in a downward spiral. And the Bible says in this fact, Samson had a great prophecy over his life and God was going to do something awesome with his life. And the Bible says that he loved a woman and the woman's name was Delilah. There was nothing wrong with Delilah. Delilah was not evil. Delilah was actually a good woman until the lords of the Philistines came over to her and says, listen, you've got, we're going to have to give, we're going to give you money, but in return, we want you to betray this man so that we can literally find out where his strength is and kill him. And so we are going to give you this amount of money. And that was what became the thorn and Samson's life. Listen to me. Many of you have great destinies and as you have great destinies, you have to trust God for great relationships. You have to be aware that not everybody that comes to you and smiles at you and say, oh, you look good, you have to be in relationship with. You can be friends with everybody, but you cannot share your life um, story. You cannot share everything about your life with everybody. There are some things in your life that just a few people have got to know. You cannot share your intimate most uh, secret things to everybody you meet. And not everybody that tells you we, they love you, you must be able, you must trust that. Some people will tell you they love you in order to get to a place in your life in order to strike a blow and that will put, be the end of you. So not everybody that says I love you means you must live your life to them. In fact, in this life, the only person you have is you, yourself, and God. Are you listening to me? You have you, yourself, and God. So you must all the time trust God that whatever he will, br he will bring good things in your life and then you also must trust God to take out some things out of your life because there are some relationships when it comes into your life if you just watch your life you will find out that it starts going down and when it starts going down you must begin to go into the place of prayer and ask God why is it going in this direction sometimes it's because of the person you have met not everybody is supposed to be a blessing to you not everybody, not every preacher is a blessing to you. There are some preachers that when you are connected to, your life will move forward. 
As good as all preachers are, there are some when you connect to, you are not going anywhere in life. It's because they are not the ones for you. God has assigned great relationships for you. It's not every church that is a blessing to you. You can go to all the churches in London and be a part of any church, be, go from church to church, but you will find out that there is one church you will get to that will be a, a life changing opportunity things will turn around in your life it is not the same with everybody and usually that church that brings that kind of change into your life is the very one that the enemy wants to get you out of so you must know that not every relationship is a blessing not 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 everyone that says to you i will help you means that you must tell them everything about their life when some people say to you, I will help you, even if they have the ability to help you, you must have the strength to say thank you, but no thanks. The Bible says the kings came to Abraham and they wanted to bless him. And Abraham says, no, thank you. I don't want you to bless me in the capacity you are thinking of. Least you will say that you made me who I am. There are some people or some relationships when you get involved with, the people make you and they, 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 they tie you so much because they make you so that you could not do anything without them. That kind of relationship relationship is deadly and you must find a way and get out of that relationship there are some relationships you get into that the moment you get into that relationship it becomes abusive and 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 don't say well I'm, I'm i'm trusting god that god will change this man or change this woman when the relationship is abusive if it's abusive sweetheart you better get out of that thing find and separate yourself well you may say well what god has put together let no man put asunder but baby if you die how what what what, what will happen it's better you put yourself asunder and let that relationship be fixed than to stay in the same house and be, be abused or to stay in the same relationship and be abused. Some of you, because of the relationship that you are in, you are not finding any self-worth. There is no confidence in you because of the people around you. They keep putting you down. They keep telling you you can't do it. Even when you have a good idea, they'll tell you you can't fulfill that idea it's impossible for you to do it that kind of friendship those kind of relationship those are not god given relationships whenever god connects you to a great relationship it moves you ahead it does not move you back whenever God connects you to a relationship is supposed to move you in the path of your destiny and connect you to the place where the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. In other words, when God connects you to godly relationships, there is no sorrows attached to it. In other words, it's not supposed to destroy you. Hmm. Meanwhile, when there are other relationships that God allows to come into your life, is to teach you that not everybody that says to you that you are wonderful is your husband. Not everybody that says to you, you are a nice gentleman, is your wife. Especially those who come and say, well, God told me. Tell them if God told me, well, God has not told me. So you take your place and until God tells me, we are not going, getting into no relationship. Because many people have gotten and married the wrong people because they came and told you that God told me that you was my wife or God told me that that you are my husband and so you jumped into the relationship and now you are married and you can't really testify because you know what's happening to you hey listen if God didn't tell them listen get out of that thing because you will not go and fulfill your destiny like that listen at the end of the age what is important is God saying to you, thou good and thou faithful servant. Why? Because that which I gave you to do on the earth, you have been faithful and you have accomplished it. Now, 
What will you say to God if God was to ask you, what I gave you, what have you done to it? Will, will your excuse be because my friend? How can your excuse be because of my friend? Because all you needed to do was when God revealed that your friend was dangerous, you needed to separate yourself. The Bible says that if your right arm or one of your arms is offending you or restricting you from getting into your destination, cut it off. If your right eye is stopping you from seeing, then pluck out your eye. It's not literally meaning cut off your right hand and remove your right eye. It's saying that if you your connection or your relationships that you ever get into is causing your vision to go impaired or is destroying your vision, then that relationship is not a God-given relationship and get yourself out of there. I don't care what they are bringing on the table. I don't care what they are offering. I don't care what promises they are giving you. Get out of that relationship. There are some relationships that when the moment you got into, you got into crime. But that was not you that is not how you are and that's not your nature you are not a criminal but it's in that relationship you've gotten into and now you become a criminal get out of that relationship well the, the people's heart will be broken and and all of that well if their heart is broken let them deal with that thing but you need to get yourself out of that place and get yourself to the place that what what God has said concerning you can come to pass than to be linked with the yoke that is destroying your life. That's why the Bible says that don't be unequally yoked. In other words, don't yoke yourself with something that is going to destroy your destiny and say, I'm yoked to it. Remove yourself from the yoke. Not every yoke can be put on you. The Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. So if there's a yoke that has been placed on you, there is an anointing that will break the yoke from off your life so that you can move. That means there is an anointing that can release and separate the relationship and cause you to move on and prosper in the way that you must go and see that the things that God has for you will happen. You know that you and that lady, because you all have children, and you stick together because you all have children, but this woman is not a, a, a positive influence in your life. Just because your children play together doesn't mean this woman has to be your bosom body. Because while she's your bosom body, nothing is happening in your life. Move forward and, and go and do something. You know, because of having this relationship, you were progressive in life and you like to do something. Now you are stuck on the social, uh, social and now you are just claiming benefits and you are not moving forward and your whole life has just dropped because of your relationship. Listen, sweetheart, get rid of that relationship. Get your life back on track and begin to start moving. Begin to believe again. Begin to dream again and, and move forward. In Samson's life, it was because Delilah was saying to him, show me where your strength is and then so I can afflict you. And Samson knew the truth that this woman wanted to destroy my relationship or wanted to destroy my destiny, but something would not separate from this relationship. It's not every relationship is a blessing. He had other relationships and it did not bring him to his destruction. But this very one was a dangerous one and he would not let it go. That friend of yours is dangerous. Let him go. That preacher is dangerous. Let him go. I don't care what he's saying. Let him go. That one who said they will marry you and because of their promises, look what is happening to your life. Let him go. He is not supposed to be the one for you. Yeah, he said, well, but I've been waiting too long and when will God bring my partner? Well, what would you want? Peace or destruction? Would you want to be married to destruction or be single and have peace in your life? I would rather have peace than have all kind of turmoil in my life because I want, uh, my friends will know that I'm married. Listen, it's got nothing to do with your friends. 
and their opinions about your relationship or your marriage. Are you going to marry to please your friends or are you going to marry because it is what God wants for you? Listen to me. God is speaking to you and you must begin to move and begin to do those things that God has for you and move your life forward. It will be well with you. Listen, I'm out of time and I want to pray over the airwaves right now and minister to those who are going through strange relationships and they have been yoked and they don't know how to get out of. Thank God that God has anointed a preacher that will come your way to declare, decree a word, declare a word that will break that yoke of the enemy of your life and they're anointed to separate and let you go free. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for that one watching me right now that is in this strange relationship. I break it in the name of Jesus. By the anointing, I speak into your life and say, be separated in the name of Jesus. That ungodly tie, I break it in the name of Jesus. I speak to that one that his child is locked up in a strange relationship of gang. I speak and I decree, may the anointing come into your house. I say, stretch your hand towards me. May the anointing come into your house house and release it, your child from that strange relationship in the name of Jesus. Your child cannot have confidence that I break it and I remove that child out of that gang in the name of Jesus and I place him back into the path of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree it shall be well with you because of the blood of Jesus. It is going to be well in Jesus name. Amen. If I've been talking to you and you notice that God had been ministering to you, then make sure you take the telephone numbers that are on the screen and call me because my assistants are waiting for your call that we will be able to pray with you. Some of you, your, your prayer requests, I, I can't deal with it on the lifeline. I have to deal with it behind the scenes so we can deal with those things that are, are affecting you. Listen, we love you so much. We thank God for your life. Your life will be blessed. And watch out for us again. We'll be back again next week, Monday, with this misdirections of the enemy. And we'll see what God will do for you. I know you are blessed. Tell someone about this, that shaping your destiny is doing something awesome. Take all the details you need. And if you need to go to our website, it's www. CICMHQ.org.uk. God bless you, and to see you next week. Have a wonderful time. God bless.